Okay, so while I've never played this particular game, I do happen to know what it is. Spin Dizzy. We're going to get it started right here. Because, yeah, I've seen this game before, but I've never actually played it. So I kind of have an, a vague idea of what we're getting into. Nope, we got some flashing. Um, from what I remember, it's kind of like an isometric game. And you're just sort of controlling a character in this isometric view. I don't know, that's, that's basically the most I remember about it. It has nothing to do with the character of Dizzy the Egg, who was pretty popular back in the Commodore days. We got our intro here, another one from the Remember group. Okay, so we're gonna get started here, spacebar, and we got some documents. Scenario. As we all know, working for the corporation is a hard life, and the mission you are to be sent on this time is far from the usual run-of-the-mill stuff. The backroom boys have discovered a new dimension that contains a strange artificial world hanging in space. Uh, yeah, because that just happens to that just happens to happen at your desk at your desk job. <laughs> Your blue-collar job? Something like that. Of course, they want it mapped, and as trainee assistant cartographer for Unknown Worlds... <laughs> that's an interesting job title. The job has fallen to you. Because the company's far from noble motivations... It's all government-sponsored work, you know. Time is money. The more time you spend out there, the more, more money the company can claim. <laughs> um, so does that mean it's actually good to waste time? Somehow I don't think that's worded right. The remote scout craft you are given is an old-fashioned geographic environmental reconnaissance land mapping device, also known as Gerald. Um, why is that not capitalized? Oh wait, it's not actually an acronym? Like, I mean, the first three letters are the same, G-E-R, but then it's L-M-D instead of A-L-D. So, yeah, that's kind of weird. I should have put a little more thought into that. Anyways, the craft is expensive to maintain, so your time is limited. If you do not move fast, the mission will be terminated. The ship's computer holds the initial radar map of the surface, and your task is to explore each area, collecting energy in the form of jewels, for which you will be rewarded with extra time. Since this world is hung in the affinity of space, falling off is not a good idea. Should you lose or destroy your craft, it will be recreated and beamed back to the last location visited. This will cause an enormous power drain, resulting in the loss of valuable time. Okay, so instead of extra lives, if you die, you just simply lose some time? I guess that makes sense. Okay, so you use the controls to move to joystick controls to move the character around the screen. Um, apparently the F keys on the keyboard can turn the screen. Okay, that's interesting. Well, given that it's an isometric game, I imagine that depending on how tall certain elements are, maybe you would need to turn the screen to be able to see what you're doing. Well, the game actually has a map. Press M to display the map. Unexplored areas are marked in red. Visited areas in yellow. Any area where a jewel was seen, but not collected, in purple. Okay, so the idea is we are trying to collect all the jewels here. Um, S displays your current score at any time. L, load a previous game. R to save the game. Um, that's weird. I guess because they're using S for score. But maybe then you should have said P for points. Or maybe the P is the pause key or something. But called it. <laughs> P is the pause key. <laughs> Um, C to co toggle between color and monochrome. Press I to alter Gerald's shape for sake of eye strain. Okay. Okay, that's it there. So run stop, start the game. It said in the the remember um, intro at the start there that when this screen comes up that says it's loading, it's not actually loading. You just push space bar. <laughs> so that's probably like the original loading for the non-cracked version of the game. Um, unlimited time, no. Okay, that was the only trainer. So, Spin Dizzy. <laughs> Say it right. Spin Dizzy by Electric Dreams by Paul Shirley. Um, fire to start, S for scores, O for options, H for help. What's the options say? You can change the speed between slow and fast. You can change between one and two players. And go back to the main menu. Okay, so fire to start. So we get our time. We got our map. And we got our jewels. Um, not a mut. Oh, oh, wait, wait. 
<laughs> oh, right. Because it's isometric, left is not left. Left is diagonally up. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's easy enough. I'm just going to hold the controller at an angle. <laughs> so now, my left is actually diagonally up, just like the movement here. Okay, that should be a little better. <laughs> Okay, so we got our jewel there. Um, apparently we've got arrows showing where we can go. Um, so I'm guessing we can go... Okay, so there's it, it's actually, there's like different screens we can go down. That makes sense. Wh whoops. <laughs> um, uh, wait. That didn't cost me any time at all. Okay, maybe the... Maybe when it says it costs you time, it's actually just being... It's just hyperbole. The time the time you lose is just simply the um, for the time wasted as a result of making such a mistake. Okay, but we got another jewel. And oh no, wait! I just saw it there. You do lose five seconds off the timer if you fall off. Okay, I and mean, you know there might. Looking at the size of the map, there might actually be a passage over this way. Because it seems like if you go off the edge of the map, you go... Yeah, you go on to another side. Okay. I'm giving the controls very light taps to be able to make it through all of this. So, hopefully we get to we get to open up and go a little faster or something. Because you will go soaring fast, it seems, if you, um, if you hold the button down for any length of time. So let's go up to the arrow, and then move across there. Oh, there's a bit of a hill, so we need need a little more speed to get over that. And then we'd want to... Oh, that, that doesn't look pleasant. We have to go across that ramped section. Oh, boy. Okay, so... <laughs> this is tricky. Ah! Okay, I got the jewel. <laughs> it cost me a lot of... Oh, there's nothing... Interesting. What if we just floor it like that? Okay, that got us to the other side at least, but now we're really low on time. Uh, this doesn't seem like it's going to go well. Oh boy. Yeah, there's only um, five seconds left now. I don't think I can make it all the way back to where I started from here. <laughs> um, and we ran out of time. Mission aborted. Well, that went well. So it says press a key to go on. You've completed 1% of screens, 1% of jewels, 1% of game. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1% of life, apparently. Um, and that just sends us back to the title screen. Okay. So maybe this time let's not go to that um, southern area. I'm guessing that's south based on the directional arrow in the bottom corner that's showing that north is to the up and right right now. So let's go this way instead. Or actually, no, let's actually get that extra jewel first, because the jewels do give you some more time. Not a lot of time from the looks... Okay, that was weird. Okay, so it must be that every single every single edge of the map of the screen that you're on actually does connect to the other screens. That's interesting. But also partially annoying, because it means you can fall off just from changing screens if you don't do it right. Okay, we got another... Another thing we gotta jump, maybe? Okay, let's give ourselves... Okay, I made the jump. And then immediately fell off the other end. Um, Cause yeah, you can, what you can do is you can actually push the button for extra speed. But the problem is that it's a lot of extra speed. So yeah, you can go soaring. Okay, let's try, let's get to the edge there. Oh. Okay, there's actually fall damage as well. <laughs> so you can't fall from too great a height. Um, although it looks like we can grab that, and then maybe... Well, it looks, seems like there might be some steps here. It's kind of hard to tell, though. I mean, that seemed to work. Okay, and then we've got a weird kind of platform up there, and arrows showing us to go... Oh wait, this should actually get us back to this side where we got these two jewels here. And we just have to make sure we not don't f completely fall off the thing. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, so moving on, we've got... Okay, I've got to make some kind of weird jump here. So let's line ourselves up, get some speed. And I just bonk? What? Let's try that again. Okay, I managed to get off <laughs> to the th other side that time, but... Wow. Yeah, the game really expects you to, like... Or, wait, is this even possible? Okay, it's... Um... What? Do I have to, like, do an angled jump? Because that, that jump is not possible. <laughs> what was I supposed to do there? <laughs> well, at least I got 2% of the screens and jewels in game this time, so... Doing little better? Okay, so so far, like, the game has pretty responsive controls, but the difficulty seems like it's through the roof. Um, well, let's try this way. Maybe we'll have some better luck going to other parts of the game. Like, maybe I'm doing the super hard stuff first. And that's the problem. Because I imagine what the trick might be that you go through the easy stuff to get yourself the time you need to be able to survive the harder stuff. Like, that might be what's going on here. Because, yeah, making my way back from getting those jewels, I've already pretty much lost all the extra time I got from getting them. So it's like, I'm not entirely certain... Oh, okay, we're in a new section now. Um, I guess we're going to jump this. Oops, <laughs> and I bonked. Okay, so I can't get that jewel from down here, so I'm guessing there's probably a way to get up there somehow. Oh, uh, well, I guess this will be our first chance to use the F keys, so let's see if we can get a better angle on this room here. I don't think so. Okay, okay, this one's not bad, but I'm still not entirely certain what's going on here. Seems like that's the only way to go is like that. And then it looks like there might be some kind of, um, plat- oh, it's going down. So maybe if we just happen to be on it, maybe? Did it go down all the way? Like, I can't see what's going on because this structure here is crazy. Oh, I did get onto it. Okay, so if we go back this way now, then we get ourselves a jewel. And yet the jewels only give you 10 seconds. So it's like, you really need to get a- you really need to be going fast to actually get everything from the scene from the way it seems oh uh that gave me a diamond looking thing not entirely certain what's going on there um let's see if we can get a better angle on this so if i go down up oh, that's too far a fall hmm so one of the things i'm noticing is that this game would probably play better if it was more of a contiguous world instead of being um separated off into these individual screens but at the same time, I understand why it's individual screens. Because in terms of, um... Oh, there was actually a jewel in there. In terms of the... Where's my... Where'd my thing go? <laughs> uh... Okay, there we go. Because, yeah, in terms of figuring out where you are, it's a little difficult to really keep track of where you're going or where everything is. And this platform doesn't seem to move. Yeah, I'm going to run out of time just trying to get back to somewhere where I can go. Although that let me just let me step down right there. So maybe I can finally... Well, <laughs> I only have two seconds left. Yeah, there goes my time. I'm up to 4%. <laughs> I got 4% screens, 4% jewels, 4% a game. Uh, yeah. So if I'm only up to 4%, that means that this is a pretty big map. In fact, I just remembered, there's an M key to see the map, right? So, let's actually get back into the game again. Um, do we have... Whoa! <laughs> okay, this is a big game. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... Uh, every one of those pixels is a room. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is not a small map. And we get 110 seconds to, to go through it all. <laughs> and who knows how many jewels? I mean, 9 jewels represented 4%. So I'm going to guess 10 jewels probably represents 5%, which means there's 200 jewels. So that would be technically be 2,000, 2,000 extra seconds of time, although they seem to last longer than seconds. Let's actually um, time this out for a moment here. If we go back into the game, yeah, each one of those time increments actually se feels like roughly 4 seconds. So even though the timer says 113, it's probably more like 152 or something like that. Okay, well, we did check out this lower section here, so let's go this way. Oh, we already get another gem. That's nice of them. And then that one looks like it's going to be a pain to get, but we'll see. And then... Okay, so this one we just have to go up a really high ramp. And the only trouble with these... Well, that was a weird room. The only trouble with these ramps is just getting yourself... Yeah, making sure you don't fall off once you... Well, we got the space bar for breaks, so you just gotta remember to slam on that space bar. Although I think we need speed to get up this section here. Okay, that worked. Immediately hitting the brakes. Um... Okay, that was weird. That ball sort of chased after me and then flew off the map, and now it's not doing anything. Um... I guess we can get the jewel and just... Well, I don't know what this thing is. And it looks like it's in the air. I don't know what it is. Okay, that's kind of weird. It's almost like there's a platform. But it's almost like it has a... Or it's not a shadow. It's like a symbol. And now the platform's moving? Not entirely certain what's going on there. Okay, so we got another screen here. But I don't want to go onto it just yet, because I managed to find my way onto, like, these walls up here. So I'm just sort of following these arrows, because maybe it'll point me somewhere you... Or, wait, I've already been here. Oh, that top thing is burning away my time. <laughs> okay, mental note, don't touch the top. Top is very not fun. <laughs> I think I just lost, like, 30 freaking seconds or something. Okay, so that time, touching the symbol on the floor actually made, like, another thing appear up top. What about this symbol? Okay, that changed it. It still doesn't work for me. And now it looks fine. Okay, it's kind of a weird room. Can we get a better angle on it? Yeah, it's a better angle. Okay, so we're already onto the platform. We just gotta get up here, get the jewel. And because there's fall damage, we actually have to take the platform back down following. Oh, but here's the thing, though, is that even though there's all these different symbols in here, one of the panels on the floor is designed to erase all of your symbols. Specifically this one here, and that's also how the room's been gated? So you can't leave this room with any of those symbols set. Or, you know... Given the shapes of these platforms, maybe that's what these symbols are for. Is if you have particular symbols, it allows particular platforms to move. That might be what's going on. Okay, so if we look at our map now... Okay, so it shows the areas that we've mapped, and shows that we haven't forgotten any jewels, so I guess we're supposed to move on now? Of course, the trick is that we come back to this selection <laughs> of really difficult paths to go, and we're, we're 40 seconds down. Or, well, 60 seconds down to 40. Like, I don't think this is really that possible unless you are able to go through these rooms, like, blazing fast. And I think I should mention, too, the controls are accelerative, so it is very easy to just get yourself going in such a way that it's, that you're, pac <laughs> you're basically screwed. <laughs> Although, that was weird. Was I not losing time when I... Okay, so normally, if you fall off, you lose like five... Or, hang on. <laughs> the timer's actually going way faster now for some reason. Look at it, it's actually going normal speed. Earlier when we saw it, it was going much slower. But now it's actually going like proper seconds. Well, you know what, it still says only 4% of jewels with 10 of them, so that means there's more than 200 jewels in the game. So that was Spin Dizzy. Um, this game plays kind of like Marble Madness on steroids. <laughs> it is, like, 
like Marble Madness itself is a really hard game with an isometric thing and moving an accelerative object around, specifically a marble. But the thing is, Marble Madness is just a series of short stages. So you can literally beat it in under 15 minutes. <laughs> but because of the level of difficulty, if you're not experienced at the game, it's going to take you mul multiple attempts to get through all of that. Spin Dizzy here decided to take Marble Madness's difficulty, and instead of having just a handful of rooms, it's got like 300 some odd rooms. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's really tricky. Now, I know the game has saving and loading in place, but I'm going to guess that saving and loading also saves and loads the timer state? Like, it makes so much sense now why the only trainer that was cracked into this thing was an unlimited time thing. <laughs> because that's really the only factor that's making this game very, very difficult. If not for that time limit, then you would take it at your own pace. But as a result of taking it at your own pace, there's no longer that challenge factor. The challenge factor is now just simply survival. And even then, it's like, yeah, I'm not sure if this would work better with extra lives or with the time limits. Jeez. I guess a better question, why does it need either? Like, this game is so big that it seems almost pointless to have a time limit or extra lives. Because one way or another, it's going to take the player a lot of time to get through this thing. So why not just make it so that they can just clear it as they see fit? Instead of having to arbitrarily cut them off and then force them to restart? I don't know.